guess we can get started. I don't guess anybody else is going to come in. But, uh, bear with me a little bit. My name is Joe, Joe Crookman. Um, I'm not the best public speaker, but I'll try to make you not fall asleep. Um, doing classic arcade works, uh, build custom uh, reproduction cabinets using a CNC machine um, for high accuracy and uh, just good quality. Um, basically, for my day job, I'm an airline pilot, so I just do this part time at nights and on the weekend. Um, grew up wanting to rebuild everything, you know, just fix, take things apart and fix them. Uh, always loved working with wood. I used to build uh, electric guitars uh, back in the day. Always took, uh, you know, took shop and, and stuff. Sold tools at Sears for a while when I was in college. And uh, let's see, uh, company just started up a couple months ago. So we're going pretty good, busy, and uh, go over a little bit about why you might want to replace your your cabinet. Of course, everyone knows cosmetics. Uh, big thing down here in Houston, water damage. It's hard to hard to get around that. You know the the cosmetic chips and stuff. We can uh, bondo up and, and fix corners and stuff, but sometimes the water damage is is too much. That and uh, I've got a couple. I don't know probably other people too. You don't know what's been living in some of these things for 30 years sitting in a warehouse. Yeah, that smell. Yeah, mold <laughs> smell. <laughs> yeah, we've got three little kids too, you know, four, three, and, and seven months now. So I got a couple machines that they're not coming in the house. We got Star Wars that had rats or something and <laughs> pee all over it. So so eventually it's going to get a new cabinet, then it, then it can come in. So we replaced them for that, and uh, yeah, just for health-wise, for your family and your kids. And uh, also, another reason you might want to replace it is these uh, cabinets, especially like the Taris, are just so heavy. And uh, if you're going to get a new cabinet, you think about maybe doing a plywood or something that'll save like half the weight and be much easier to move. And then it's going to be resistant to the water too, more so than the carbon board was. Um, and that, and also with all the, the main conversions now, if we got an alter, alternative out there for hacking up the original classics, you know, hopefully we can steer some of these guys over uh, mm -hmm. to a new new cabinet. You know, it may fit them better. That way, they don't have to hack up an old one, and uh, we can make uh, make that conversion easier. And uh, basically, like I said, we uh, build the uh, cabinets using a CNC machine, uh, short for computer numerical control, if that means anything to anyone. Uh, basically what we do is take an original cabinet, get the tape measure out, measure everything. Most of the time we have to break it apart so we can measure up the inside of the parts. So basically sacrifice the old cabinet. Sometimes you can put them back together, but most of the time not. So we'll lay everything out, measure it, and then program it to the computer using a CAD drawing. And once we got the file on the computer, then we just make however more you want, you know, without having to destroy another cabinet. And uh, the good thing about that is every time the cabinet's going to be the same. I know some guys probably, uh, I know you do, Derek, build one with the router, copy it out, and how tedious that can be. I want to test that, that <laughs> Tron that's in there, I just built last this past week. It's... <laughs> Never ever again. I, I told him. I said, "Oh, you know, you got all my business. You got it. It's a huge undertaking." So, yeah. So, like I said, once we get it measured out and put it in the computer, you just tell me what cabinet you want, and I'll hit the button, put the wood down there, and it'll come out. And it'll come out the same every time, you know. And um, let's see. The machine basically is a pretty big, complex piece of machinery because we use four by eight sheets of wood. So the machine is uh, 10 feet long, 6 feet across, stands about that tile. I don't know how many thousand pounds it weighs, but it's a good piece of machinery. Generally costs fifteen to $20,000, so it's a good investment. And uh, basically what it is, is it's a router, uh, a souped up router on an arm that comes across, and it'll cut that part out as it goes, and it's got a vacuum table where it holds down the material so it won't move. Um, let's see. And uh, 
Once you decide that we're going to replace the machine, we got to decide what kind of material that we want to use. Everything back in the day was pretty much a particle board or a plywood like the, the William stuff. But now, if we're going to build a new one, we can, we can go back and use the same particle board. Or we can uh, do, I got one sitting out there, the black melamine, so that we don't have to put the vinyl on it. And basically what that is, it's a slick side. Um, it's ready to put the artwork straight on, no prep work or anything. Or we can do um, plywood too. Generally, I use a birch ply um, imported um, just to save on cost a little bit. We can do American birch ply too. It's a heavier material. It's a little better. Um, costs about twice as much as the import stuff, but it's a little nicer material. That's what that uh, cocktail table I have sitting out there. That's mm. the American birch ply. Um, or if you want to do something fancy too, you know, if you want a, a cocktail table and you want to stain it instead of doing the, the wood grain vinyl, whatever kind of wood you can find, you bring it in, put it down and, and cut it out. Like um, old fashioned. <laughs> a lot of people are starting to get like old wood from uh, old houses yeah. that are being torn down. Yeah. So you can even use. Well, the, it's a sheet form. Yeah, it's got to be a sheet form and it's got to be somewhat flat yeah. <laughs> too. So. Like old barn pieces yeah. might be kind of hard to do. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, some advantages and disadvantages of each. Uh, the plywood, like I said, is lighter weight. It's going to resist the moisture more than the particle board or the melamine. But the advantage for the particle board, why they used it back in the day too, is it's straight. Um, like it, if you lean a piece of plywood up against the wall for long, you'll know it's just going to start to cup or bow. And uh, the particle board is going to stay pretty much flat and straight the whole time. Um, it's a lot heavier, the particle board is, and it's more subjective to the moisture. So just think about that for uh, whatever application you're going to do. Um, basically, um, the good thing about rebuilding a cabinet too is if we need to change something, like you're going to do a main cabinet or something, we can delete the, the coin door like, if you don't want that access. So change that up and uh, if we can figure out the mounts that you're going to use for your LCD or if you're going to go that way, change that and, uh, and mount that up too. Um, basically once you got your cabinet built, um, all you really have to do is transfer all the parts straight across so pretty much anybody can do it. This is going to be a simple screwdriver, maybe a drill to tap the holes. Um, just going to change your power supply over, your boards and the monitor. Um, so basically four bolts on the monitor, pull it out, stick it over, and four bolts on every other piece, and then run your wiring. So it's pretty uh, simple and it's going to be a lot easier than going trying to sand down a water damaged cabinet and, uh, and putting it back together. Um, let's see. I think some of these cabinets have, have dowels in them, like a plastic or wooden dowel to uh -huh. uh, do you do you put that into it as well or is that up to the yeah it's going to depend what it is um, you know we can do that way or a lot of times to save cost and time is uh, we'll just do a butt joint and then do a blocking strip on the inside and glue and staple it um, like the older stuff that had the mortise and tenon joints they'll all come come back like that um, that and one difference that I generally do is to do a square block as opposed to just the an angle triangle. If that's really important to somebody, by all means, we can do that. But um, just usually saves a little bit of time and it's a little easier to do that way. Um, let's see, stuff that we're working on right now is uh, well, we got like over 30 different unique designs and it's always growing. If we get something that somebody wants and we can get it original and measure it and put it in the computer, we can make that. Right now I'm working on getting the environmental disc of Tron. I got the original plans on that one. So we're working on getting that if anybody would need one of those. And uh, also working on uh, just a MAME for a, a customer. But um, that's his going to be his personal design, So, but we can work and make a custom design for whoever else wants one. Let's see, do we have any questions, anything I can kind of answer along the way here? Are you, you're located here in Houston? Yeah, in Houston, just on the north side in Springs. So, uh, I guess the prices in, 
that are listed on here is that we we pick it up, not I mean, yeah. this is ship, but this is the prices if we just come. Yeah, that's so. just for the cabinet, yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah, for the shipping, like if you can set it up, that's great, or I can look around mm. and try to find find but, a way to ship it up too. Anybody else? You know? What's what's the lead time? Generally, from the time that I get to file and go to build the cabinet, it takes two to three weeks. It just depends how many orders I have in front. Um, so it could be anywhere from like a month to two months, especially this time of year. Starting you, to get you're going to start busy. stocking up on like your Miss Pac-Man Galaga cabinets, the common ones, keep them ready to go? or I might, At this point, yeah, it's on demand, uh, just as far as base-wise. Uh, yeah. So... Yeah. That and uh, it's a pretty good investment in each one just for materials oh, yeah. And, yeah. and machining time. So, but yeah, the com if I get start getting lots more orders on the com ones, I definitely look at doing that. Do you think you might actually get into being able to make some pinball cabinets? Uh, if I can get the plans and get one copy, <coughs> that's a definite possibility. You know, basically anything that we can put in a 2D drawing and have a a vertical measurement on it. And so if we had a particular game, a particular cabinet, we strip it down, bring it up to you, leave it with you for a couple of weeks, you could, you could. Uh, yeah, I don't think that'd be a problem. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? John, how'd you, uh, you might have covered this, I kind of got in late, but how'd you get into, what made you decide, I think I'll start building yeah. game cabinets. Yeah. Uh, just a need or just hobby? Well, kind of, yeah, I'm pretty new to the arcade scene too. I started getting into it last year, right about the same time the show, so I missed the show last year. Mm. But um, yeah, like I said, I always enjoyed working with wood and stuff, and I was on the KLOV forum, and uh, happened to cross uh, Brett, DP Wiz, up in Ohio, mm. and I started talking in with him, and uh, just because the shipping on these things is so much that I was able to work out a deal with him where he generally has most of the designs that I've been getting and he shares his, his plan with me, and then I'll cut them out down here. So it, it was basically just a good fit because I got this new passion for arcade games, and I'd always like building stuff, so it was kind of a no-brainer. Hmm. You include uh, marquee brackets? Right now, as of now, I don't. Consider uh, it. Yeah, that's... A, that's a, it's a simple little thing that you think most people would just go to Home Depot and get something. Right. But a lot of people are, I know that's one thing that you're one of your competitors offers. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm looking into it too, like, we do any option that you want, like I just have the base, the base cabinet there, but mm -hmm. if we want to do T-molding, that's not a problem at all. Usually it's like 15 sure. to 30 bucks option to put on. And the brackets too, if I can find the source and a good vendor, well, I mean, it's I all, might all be able to hook you up there. That's why. And I'll gener I'll generally, um, it's just whatever the break bracket costs, just pay for the bracket and I'll put it on sure. there. Because it's like four screws. So, right. yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, anybody else? With your CNC setup, can you do mitered corners like for a pinball cabinet where you don't have uh, edges exposed? Right, like the 45 degree yeah. angle, exactly. That stuff, uh, I do on the table saw. Okay. So the CNC machine, uh, it's just like the router. It's just a router bit, so it's not gonna cut yeah. cut the angle. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm building a virtual pinball machine here soon. And uh -huh. I used to have access to a shop full of tools, but now I don't. And it, my build will probably definitely be up a little bit if I just outsource the cabinet shell somebody that has the shop and all the right stuff to do it right. Sure. Be a lot quicker. Yeah, and that and most of the cabinets too, the the big majority of it's done on the CNC machine, but about a quarter to half of it's also done on the table saw and hand router. Because there's some things that that machine just won't do. Yeah. Like the angle cuts and um, when you have router like dados on both sides the machine will cut out one side, but it's just so time consuming to make a jig to put the part back down on the machine yeah. that we just do it by hand route yeah, or like the back the, side. The recessed buttons and stuff in the front. Yeah. That was one of the things that I could probably do myself, but it's just easier to, when somebody has the tools to set up yeah. space to do it. Yeah, and the setup's the, the big thing, the most time consuming for everything. It's once, especially for me, like, uh, setting up my router to the depths for the T-molding slots and everything. It's about 
75% set up and 25 or 10% actual cut time. Yeah. We can save money and mass produce them too. Exactly, yeah. If we can do several at, at one time, you know, it can really yeah, really crank them out that way. Um, does anybody have any questions on like maybe fixing up their uh, cabinet? They're working on something that's got some damage, maybe we can figure out how to correct it with like, you know. I'm sure everybody's probably done like the Bondo corner and put nails in it for, for strength. And yeah, I picked up a space shovel. The head got busted apart, and the guy that had it, it construction and teased it to bring it back together and find a back corner where it broke off. Uh -huh. But the thing's not square. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, opening the, the, the little light door is uh, a trick. <laughs> yeah. Probably want to try and find out. Yeah, I, re I really think if you could do some, e even just like making the head for a pinball, was, you could really drum up some business that way yeah. as well. Um, yeah, I've seen a couple like the old witch heads and stuff that was the, the, all delaminating and healing and moisture and stuff. Oh, yeah. The nice games of cabinets just came to its life in some barn for 30 years. Mm -hmm. and seen better days. <laughs> anything else I can say. Yeah, I went through everything pretty quick and I wasn't sure how long it was going to take, but uh, <laughs> let's see. Anybody have any questions about the CNC machine or how that works or interested on that? Which CAD CAM system do you use? Uh, right now I'm using um, BCAR Pro. Um, is it, is it, or it Actually it doesn't. The, the machine um, is a shop bot, but um, just the, the stuff from Vetric is the company that makes it. It's just so much like more user friendly. Uh, yeah, right now I'm contracting a guy to cut the stuff for me on his, on the machine. Like I said, we're pretty new, only a couple months of business. So assuming that the demand's still there, we're gonna go ahead and uh, purchase our own machine. Oh, and then you we'll don't be, actually do the work. Do you? Well, I have a get all the files, take them to a guy, and he puts them in the computer, and we just lay the, the wood down, and he cuts them out, and then hands me the parts, so. You do the program. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, that and all the table saw and hand router stuff. Mm -hmm. um, if, you're, if you're gonna do a plywood with uh, laminate instead of the melamine, can you get alternate color laminate other than black? We have to look into sources. I haven't looked at the sources on the laminate. You can probably just take a full sheet plywood and do the contact panel both pieces, lay them together and go ahead and have the laminate on it and then machine it. Of course that depends on yeah. the, the router bit, depending on the speed of travel stuff, might tear into the laminate but you have to try it out. Yeah, we have to test run, but that would be the way to do it. So I mean when you do, right now, when you do a plywood with, uh -huh. with, with laminate on it, I mean, or do you do, you do plywood with laminate? I haven't yet. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. No, no, that's, that's earlier. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the way to do it, is just to, to laminate and cut it all in one step yeah. so that it uh -huh. matches up. Definitely. Yeah, I thought about doing that one with one of my potential deals, but I just never got around to it. Just, I don't have the space to work anymore. And I can't leave anything else. I have to spend two hours setting up and I'm going to break it down to do 15 minutes of work. Well, um, I think that's about all I have, it, unless there's a, anybody has any questions on uh, anything else. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Yeah, thank you. Thank sure. you. Sure. Uh -huh.